So, namaste. <clears throat> Welcome to satsang today. <clears throat> so um, if you're new to satsang or new to these teachings, uh, welcome. And if you are new, it doesn't mean you're at a disadvantage. Satsang is for the direct experience of truth. Uh, we're not actually who we think we are. And actually we are so much more than our thought construct itself. And satsang is for the uh, direct realization, not a thought understanding, not a mind understanding, but a living from a very different place inside our own being. Our own being is actually infinite. There is only one of us here. <clears throat> and that's one thing to understand intellectually. It's another thing to realize experientially. And that's what satsang is for, to come to a deeper experiential understanding. So if you are new, then you might even be at an advantage because uh, a lot of what we do in satsang is forgetting, moving away from letting go of who we thought we were, who we were sure, whose thought constructed self we've built around ourselves. So I'm going to answer a couple of questions that have been sent in. I'll open it up on here live for questions too. And I want to finish with um, a little meditation. It'll be nice to do a a little meditation for 10 or 15 minutes to finish. So um, I'll try to get through two or three of these. Uh, if you do want to ask something, I'll take up to four questions here live tonight. Um, so this says, dear Helen, I'm finding some trouble in my inquiry. I've recently been able to identify when I'm suffering, who is this me that is suffering? <clears throat> and I notice it is just a thought. However, even though there is this realization, I feel the power of this thought identity is still strong. Um, uh, I must be alert all the time if I don't want to get caught up with it again. I feel tired, incapable of to rest, and I think it may be a never ending path. Do you have any suggestions for this? Thank you very much. I feel this is a great opportunity, best regards. So thank you. Um, <clears throat> so you've had this kind of deeper seeing that who you actually are is something very different to what you thought and that who you thought you were is uh, who is who it is that suffering is just a thought. It's a bunch of thoughts collected together and we've called that ourself. Our mental idea about ourself is not really who we are. And you said that you feel the power of this thought identity is still really strong and has a real pull. <clears throat> so you must be alert all the time. You don't want to get caught up again, understandably. Feel tired, incapable of resting. And you think it may never it be it may be a never-ending path. So if um when you touch down into your in your inquiry into that within you that is just here, something that is not making any effort, something that just is. And then on the other hand, you feel that you have to make a lot of effort to stay away from this mind, this separate sense of self, this old identity. And that is that really... Um, <clears throat> Something is that something that's authentic that you have to do? Do you have to be vigilant in that way all the time? Can being yourself actually be um, full of effort, or is it really going to be effortless? So notice the um, notice the separate self talking here. In the first two lines, it's the infinite self. I'm finding some trouble in my inquiry. 
I've recently been able to identify when I'm suffering who this me is that's suffering, and I notice it's just a thought. However, <clears throat> and then here comes the separate self. I feel the power of this thought identity is still strong, and I must be alert all the time if I don't want to get caught up again. I feel tired, incapable to rest, and I think it's a never-ending path. So there's an energy change there. There's a shift. And all that's happening here is that your mind is seeing that you're getting freer and clearer of it. You've took, taken a big step of, away from identifying with that. And now your mind is saying, uh, because your mind thinks if it stops thinking, you will cease to exist. Which is quite ludicrous, really, because there's plenty of times we're not thinking and we don't disappear out of existence. But mind thinks, it's convinced. If you stop thinking, you'll uh, disappear. So it makes things to talk about. It creates problems. And it's saying, here, you have to try really hard here to stay away from mind. And is that really the case? Are you sure that you are the one that has to do this? When you touch down into that presence, that consciousness, that stillness, Can it make any effort? Can it try hard? Is it even trying to get away from anything or move towards anything? So just really looking at this impossible task. You're tired, you're exhausted because you're trying to do something here that you don't need to do. So it's not an efforting to stay away from the mind. It's a Vigilant uh, to be sure that this is actually applicable to you. Because once you've started to see who you really are, the mind's going to give you all these things it needs your help resolving. And here's just the next one. Your mind's asking you for help. Can you help me resolve this? I think I've got to be vigilant, says mind, says the separate self. I've got to try really hard. Has that actually worked for any of us? It might work in the world. But in spirituality and awakening, is that actually the case? So what if you just let this go? Meaning, what if you don't make any effort to stay as the real self? And I know that may seem counterintuitive. Mine says, if I don't try to keep what I've seen, I'm going to lose ground, I'm going to slip. But actually, the self, the infinite self is effortless. And just is. So you kind of have to be like that. You have to just let what comes come. This urge, this need to be vigilant, this intensity of efforting. Just let it arise and it will fall away when you don't buy it. And then it'll rise again later. And you look at it, that's, that's really nothing to do with me, the self, the infinite self. It's an old habit, isn't it? But the way we hold on to something is by trying really hard. What if the opposite is actually true here in our awakening? <clears throat> the, the, the less effort I make to keep something or to move away from something, the more distance I naturally find between me and my mind anyway. So just notice this here, this problem that's being given to you that you're exhausted by, is it yours? Does who you really are have to do this? Or is it just, I'm being myself, I'm peaceful, I'm peaceful, I'm peaceful. Mind suggests a problem, I look at it, I might buy it for a little while, but then I'll say, actually, is that my issue? Do I have to subscribe to this one? And then when I look, it's not actually so. So whenever you're really exhausted, <clears throat> spiritually speaking, <clears throat> it's because you're trying to do something that you can't do and something that you don't have to do. So have a, have a play around with that and see <clears throat> what happens. And then, okay, next one. Um, hi, Helen. I had a momentary glimpse of truth. I saw the me character pushed to the background and the true nature of my being coming to the foreground. And in that moment, the thought, oh my gosh, that's it. 
I was the self with no filters, no concepts, no beliefs. I dropped the body. The self looked out and saw arms and objects that weren't mine, that weren't mine. I didn't get to see myself in all though. And in the next two seconds, uh, this being was lost. I've tried to be quiet and not force the desire of wanting the experience to come back. But, and in, in capitals, I want it back, lol. Of course you do. With such a clear seeing and a quiet, violent prayer to have it return, why doesn't it stick? I understand every path is perfection, but the impatient person thinks this is taking too long. <laughs> How to accelerate? So you have this seeing, you have this moment when, and if you notice, when you look back, and when that moment, that glimpse happened, you weren't trying hard to do anything, were you? You were just out in the garden digging some weeds, or you were in the shower, or you were chatting on the phone, or you were cooking some food. Most likely you weren't doing any spiritual practice at all at that point. Not that there's anything wrong with spiritual practice, but we tend to effort, use it to effort. And... um. You drop the body or you see that the body isn't yours. It isn't mine. It isn't anything. It doesn't belong. There's nobody for whom it belongs to. It's just another object like uh, all the objects in the room that you're sitting in. No more special than a table. But also everything is equally beautiful from there. Of course, you want that back. Once you've experienced that... <clears throat> It's pretty much impossible to live with, without it ever again. So, of course, you want that back. And, <clears throat> of course, that desire is going to be really, really, really strong. You've just tasted the best thing ever. You've tasted something that is beyond anything we could experience in this world. Infinite peace, stillness, vast expanse of consciousness that is you that is infinite and of course you want that back so can you just want it back fully don't try to squash it and i'm assuming that you say violent prayer in terms of its intensity only we don't need to force anything again when you experience that 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 is whatever we're calling it the infinite self consciousness it can't be violent with anything, can it? Can't do anything, actually. It just is. So feeling the intensity of the desire and then noticing the process that happens that begins perhaps in earnest. It's been going on, but now it steps up a gear, this process. <clears throat> in order for this to be a constant effortless seeing and being, we have to uh, examine all the beliefs that we've had as a separate being that get in the way of this being a constant, never-ending, effortless seeing, just constantly seeing and being yourself, infinite self. And the first one that pops up for pretty much most of us is that this truth seems to disappear. This glimpse closes back up again and disappears. And we feel, <clears throat> well, you've even said it, this being was lost. It's gone. It's lost. How do I get it back? Is the very next thing that we all say. What do I do to get it back? So is there anything you can do to get it back? And is that maybe the issue? So the being isn't lost. All that's happened is your attention suddenly, for some reason, who knows, turned around to look at the beingness that's behind it. Attention, not you, attention. Turned around to, to perceive, whoa, there's this great big thing behind me and around me and, and everywhere. And then some thought arose. Your mind's giving you a thought it needs you to, to look at that's going to get in the way. And attention turns away from the beingness to look at this thought. And we say that the beingness is gone because we're not looking at it anymore. But when you, when you had that glimpse, 
Was it something new that just arrived, that beingness, or has it always been here, but we've just literally never known how to turn around and look, which we also call meditation on, on, on the self, listening to the silence, resting as a stillness, being aware of awareness, being conscious of your consciousness, that's the turning around. Noticing the contextual field. Noticing the sense of presence, whatever you want to call it, these are all names for the same thing. So if you can um, see that the process then, because the desire arises, I want to have this all the time, and of course you do. Everything that must be cleared out comes up. And here's the first belief, this idea that you can lose something, that you've lost it. So if you are the attention doing this, then you can lose it. But if you're the beingness watching attention and watching mind, you're, watching it, you're here and you're watching attention do this. Can you lose this that you are? So you have to really question this idea. It was lost. Is it? Or is it just that attention has gone back to an object? It was on that which is not an object. And then it went back to an object out of habit. Has it really gone? So it's, uh, it's absolutely fine that you're impatient. Uh, impatience, uh, desperation and jealousy got me there. Impatient because we don't want to believe in time anymore. So that's a very good thing. But you have to really question if you actually lost it. Has it gone? Is it not right here still, the space in which the attention is moving and the mind is talking and the body's sitting in? So have a go with that. Okay, so we'll go to Caro. Is it Caro? Yeah. <laughs> I'm having one of those days too, don't worry. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Helen. Thank you very much. Uh, I have listened to your core teaching almost uh -huh. three times, each of them. And, you know, sometimes I wake up and I start with self-inquiry or meditation, or I try to, to use all of them. But really, believe me, this week has been very difficult. Uh, it's like I I miss my faith. <laughs> it's, I, I'm looking for a job and my relationship is broken. It's, I feel in zero. <laughs> then I need to, I want to, your, your help to, to do something to start again. Because I don't know, sometimes I, when I am in the interview, I listen to people, it's, for me it's stupid. In the same process, like how they, they ask you things like, you know, like I say, I need to start from zero, fresh, to, to do this kind of things because I, I feel broken in, in zero, like, full deception with everything. So let's ask this question in contemplation. Did you say the word broken? Is that what you said, broken? Inside, I feel broken inside. So let's ask this question together. Let's do some contemplation if you want to. <clears throat> so is it really true? Because it really feels true, but we don't wanna stop at feels. We wanna really find out. Is it really true I am broken? And we're just asking this question. You don't have to do any work here. We're just seeing what answers show up here. Is it really true I'm broken? My mind is pretty certain it is, but I want to find out actually. And there might be some thought answers coming, some emotions. Just let yourself feel it. You're safe here. We all love and support you. It's okay. You can let it out. Yeah. This is a kind of answer.
You've been really brave here. And we all support you. We're all loving you. We're all here with you. You're doing so well. You're being really brave here. This just needs to come out, doesn't it? Can you feel it? It just needs to come out. And whenever you feel able, just come back to the question. We're having an emotional answer right now to the question. That's okay. We want to stay with the question. Is it really true? I am broken. There's a painful emotion there as a kind of answer. There's also the question. We're just being here together with the question. Because if we don't question this, we're going to live the effect of this belief that it is true. And we really want to find out. Yeah. Is it true, actually, that you're broken? No. no, right? <laughs> so when we assume it to be true, we really live that experience, don't we? Really. And our whole life agrees with us because everyone else we meet is our own self. So we're so powerful. We are that which creates the cosmos. Any thought that you hold on to is true. It take, your whole life takes the shape of that. So the way out of that then is to question, is it actually the case? It really feels like it. It really seems like it. When I started asking these kind of questions, my mind says, lady, are you crazy? Have you seen the state of your life? It's in a mess. Of course, you, of course this is true. But you get to that point where you've had enough, right? You just, you have to break through. And I can see you there, so. Can you see how, <clears throat> when we believe this type of thought, the intensity of the emotion behind it, because we are the infinite self, we put so much attention and we really create this re very real experience for however long. But the moment we begin to question it, actually, it's like we pulled the, the charging lead out of it and it's just running on whatever battery charge it's got left. And it feels even different, even just asking the question, doesn't it? How do you feel now? Inside, I feel quiet, but I kind of stop to cry. Yeah. So you're quiet and there's emotion, but you're not suffering with that emotion, are you? It's just happening. No, it's like a reflect, uh, like projection, but not, it's quiet. So are you broken? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
it's a thought. It's just a thought. So when we live up here, we have a nightmare. When we contemplate, we ask, we move down into the heart. What's actually true right now? We get so lost in what seems to be. We experience our ideas about ourselves and the world. And we've been lost in that for who knows how long. So these things come up now to for you to question like this so you can just let them go. That's not true either. Whoa, that's not true. That was that one. Oh, my goodness, that's not true either. And then eventually you go, what if none of it's true? What if nothing you thought about yourself is true? Mine goes, oh, terrifying. But the self says, oh, you know, phew. <laughs> yes, it's like I am moving between both. Yes. Is, is that it's my thought? Or is attention going to thoughts? And then, yes. And we identify with this here attention. This is me, we say, but we're looking at, we know where our attention is. See. It might take a little confirming that one, just because you're so powerful, you are the source of the cosmos. Anything that you believe to be true, you experience as infinitely real. You can feel that, right? It seems so real. And then we start to question it, it disappears. Like, why did it ever seem so real? Because of our, our power, we, we lend this power to this belief. If you can stay in a question all day, just quietly in the background, is this true? So you're not like closing your eyes while you're at work. Well, if you can, great, but you're just like, I'm getting out of the car and going into work. Is it really true? And then you just kind of, you just glide through the day, you know, through this, you don't, you don't do this thing that we hate. I come out my meditation, everything's fine with the world. <clears throat> and then we go to work, everything's really not fine. Job interview, you know. It's just staying in that open question. I want to know what's actually true. I want to actually know what's true, not think about it. Or thoughts are going on, but I'm not so much interested in those answers because I know what, what happens when I experience those answers. We've been living it. I want to live from here. What's actually true? Can you get a feel of it? Yeah. Yeah, like really passionate. I, I really want to, really want to find out what's actually true. Anytime I feel awful, it's because I'm believing some thought, some story. And I can look at that story and go, "Is it actually true?" I can just pause right there. Is it true? And it took you about three minutes, if that, to, to go from really upset to laughing. <laughs> I'm not making light of suffering because I know it seems very real and I was stuck in it too for a long time. But when the self decides, you know what, I'm done with that, I'm going to question it and come out of it, it's very quick. <laughs> Wonderful. Very brave, very brave. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ellen. Hello. Hey, Helen. I had a question and I think I still do, but I'm just finding this really amusing that fear is creeping up the back of my neck. I mean, we've just dealt with an emotion right now. And I was sitting there, I mean, and um um, I don't know who is asking this question, I think. I'm afraid of who is showing up here or what is showing up. And, you know, um, it was a question about emotions, about positive, negative, how we label positive and negative emotions mm -hmm. and how the positive emotions appear to be the ones that we desire 
or okay, maybe I shouldn't use the word we, I. Um, we all want bliss and peace. Strive. And yeah. yeah, but I want to support the negative ones. <laughs> I, I Tell me more about that then. Feel, what does that mean to you? Yeah, yeah, this is it. Now, I was going to put this in a completely rational way, and now it's irrational. <laughs> it's showing up as irrational. Um, what does that say? Well, uh, yeah, because, because in my rational sense, I feel that um, sadness, anger, fear, all have a merit to them. And, and um, you know, um, they make things a bit more colorful. Um, add a bit more drama as well to stuff. Um, Do you want drama? It's been propping up quite a bit, but, um, <laughs> that realization that, um, yeah, I think I think I do. Some uh, parts of you, yeah, and that's very honest. Yeah. Right? Some part of me really does want drama, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, very, and very. that might be what's showing up right now. You know, why I put my hand up with this question that I'd written down this morning and um it seems a long time ago now right <laughs> that seems a long time ago yes and uh I'm, I'm throwing that out because um as I said I'm not really sure what's showing up uh right now or wants to show up um in terms um Let's start right there. Some part of me likes drama. Yeah. How does that how does that feel when you just admit that? Um a bit fearful. I think that's um yeah. A bit fearful. Is there a tiny bit of relief as well at just actually admitting it? Because there was for me, like, actually, I kind of enjoy suffering on some level, somewhere deep down. Some part of me wants to continue suffering. It was quite a shock actually admitting it, but there's a bit of a relief as well. Well, yes, actually, I'm not sure I want enlightenment. I have no idea what that is anyway. <laughs> you can so say... Lots has been has been what, written about it. But what do you what do you want then? If you could wave a magic wand right now, what do you want? Oh, <clears throat> that's where it gets difficult. I'm sure. Um, I, hmm. how do you want to feel how do I want to feel right okay um open open to want actually yeah. uh yeah um and um yeah i think open to to wanting um desiring um receiving yeah uh, what about peace? Do you want peace? Do 
probably for honest we're all gonna go yes and no yes and no but some part of me then not really no peace seems a bit boring well, very strange you should say that because you mentioned exhaustion earlier and i told a story of an experience i had in the last week of the body going into utter utter exhaustion yeah. um, and surrendering to that although i was quite afraid of it mm -hmm. but surrendering to it to the point that my body felt like it was integrated into the ground into the floor all i was aware of was a breath yeah. just the, the breath um and what I found there was openness and peace and stillness. Also known as enlightenment. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. It's just a word, isn't it? Yeah. It's just a word, but did, did uh, you like that then? I'm assuming you, you liked Oh, that. yes. Yes, so much so that um, I was there for quite a time. Or, or, so how, do, how do you live there then could it be well this is what i'm wondering well look, i, I hope you won't tell me because i've got no idea no i'm joking well i came out of that and and i've been quite ill leading up to this and and feeling you know and having been coming more and more tired over a period of time and after this a little bit later i suddenly felt energy and lightning and the mind started to, to to say yeah right that was great you know now now you can go and <laughs> you know get out there and move with all these people because i was on a retreat somewhere and da, da 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 and it was like no i do want that from that place yeah if you go off with that Yes. You went to exhausted again in three months. Yes, months, yes. Right? it'd be great them. for a time. And then, however, I then thought, but I don't want to be attached to exhaustion. <laughs> That's my way. Not, not the best there. plan. <laughs> not, not the best long term strategy. No. no. So I don't know. I just felt. But can, you, can you watch that, that thing that got up and wanted to move? Can you just watch that and not identify with it? Can you be that stillness that's here now, that peace? And watch the forward momentum of mind or ego do its thing. It's quite capable of doing its thing without us having to uh, hitch a ride with it. We can just sit here metaphorically hmm. in ourselves in the self and then peace is our constant companion stillness openness quietness and because we're not trying to get anywhere then the exhaustion you can see the exhaustion comes from this go 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 and that's just going by itself it's like one of those wind up toys you wind it up and it just but you don't have to follow it. Hmm. And you did that, right? You saw you saw this thing get up and, okay, that was nice for a while. Let's get on with it now. And you kind of said, hey, I don't really want to do that. So I'm just, you, you go, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll follow you in a minute, you know, hmm. having no intention to do so. I'm just sitting here. Yeah. You, you get started without me and I'll, I'll join you later. <laughs> Why don't I actually went to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> because you were peaceful. Yeah. yeah, deeply peaceful. Yeah, and your body could just—it's oh, not constantly like, the effect of this. Go, 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 go. It was almost like, um, well, I, I, I wouldn't know, but death in a it, way. It was just like dying. You know, now the, you the just need wasn't... to. Now you just need to stay dead. <laughs> okay, yeah. don't resurrect yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because this thing pops up every now and again and see if she wants to see if you're going to play with it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Just every now and again, you can just ask, am I still dead? <laughs> yeah. 
I think that you get it right. I'm just gonna I'm was, gonna sit here. Yeah. I've tried that running down the track and it really doesn't mm. end up exhausted and it doesn't actually get me anywhere anyway. Yeah. Because I'm infinitely still already. And if I just stay right here, everything I want will come anyway. Bless you. Yeah. So not you, sorry, I'll end the cat. Yeah. Okay. So just um, noticing that thing when it arises, we call it ego, mind, separate self, whatever, and deciding that you just, I'm just going to stay laying here as if I was already mm. expired to this world, so to speak. Mind says, oh, that sounds really dull. Mm. But actually it isn't, is it? It's quite, it's quite, um, quite yeah. something. Yeah, it's uh, quite... I guess the word expansive. Yeah, it was. That was very enlightening of our burdens. Enlightening. It? Oh no. I... <laughs> but, but only in the terms of I feel lighter. I feel free. Yes. Yes. That's all. Yeah. An awakening of sorts that I don't have to run down the road after that. Yeah. I'm not that which is moving or that which is moving is just moving inside me, part of me, but I don't need to believe it's me. I'm not my car. Yeah. Yeah. It's a vehicle, this forward seeking thing. And that's, that's all it is. And it's fine. It's not me. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the reminder. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you next time I see you, if you're still dead. <laughs> okay okay and that was a really sweet sneeze thank you <laughs> yeah. it was just adorable <laughs> thank you okay i will go to alex hi hello can you hear me i can yeah cool uh sorry that it's so dark here yeah, i hope that's it's okay. okay that's okay yeah no worries um yeah um well just as last time i don't really know what to say um um so i think i'm at a point where the intensity of my my seeking has decreased because i kind of figured um, if I am that which I'm seeking anyways, um, what's the point in in like um, getting a headache over seeking the self all the time? Yeah. yeah. And um, <clears throat> also um, there seem to be issues uh, from my past, like um, emotional issues coming up um, um, all of a sudden, especially after I wake up or something like that, um, issues that I thought um, weren't actually that big of a deal because they never seemed to bother me until now. And so I'm wondering, maybe this is some kind of deepening of the of my vulnerability or something like that that leads to stuff that didn't that I didn't used to think about coming to the surface and well i don't know um i suppose um yeah my question is what to do about it so um when you when you start to just when you can start to just let go of that seeking the intensity of that seeking um that's a sign that your identity is shifting anyway as you said if I already am this, why all this massive exertion to try to get to it? It doesn't make yeah. sense anymore. And in that, there's then some space for you to just rest as yourself. And what begins to happen has already been happening maybe is uh, for most of us, a seeing of who you really are isn't enough to completely destroy all of your old things idea about yourself so some idea yeah. arises up with some emotion behind it and it feels really uncomfortable we're having a really horrible experience 
because it it's not actually um, true now. So as a separate someone, the seeker, this idea felt really, really true. But now that you're recognizing who you really are, this idea is so opposite to uh, who you're seeing yourself to be. That's why it really, it's really becoming problematic. So it's not that you're going backwards. It's because your, your awakening is really progressing. And so I can't really see who I actually am. I am the infinite stillness and still hold on to this idea that I'm not good enough or I'm, I'm not safe or I'm not lovable. Those things yeah. just don't mix. So these things come up for us to look at. So when the emotions come up, if you can just do your best to feel them, not identify with them, but feel them. And then just, if you need to, you can just ask the emotion if it has a, a belief behind it, a story behind it. A lot of fear came up for me afterwards, a lot of sadness, a lot of anger, shame. Um, and I had to look at them in turn and say, uh, really be willing to feel the emotion, which is easier as the infinite stillness, because I'm not a, I'm not suffering from it. I'm just feeling it. So um, whatever emotion it is, you can ask it what it wants to tell you. And then question that, like we were doing with the first lady, ask if it's true. So is there a particular emotion that comes up regularly or is it several? Um, I think... Uh... They're all tied up together. Mm -hmm. They're all related to one specific event or location. And um, I think it's shame, hatred, um, anger, and so forth. So all um, it's there's this. Um, hmm. I think there's still this victim story of like um, being treated unfairly and um, and so forth and well <clears throat> i mean when the hi mind hijacks the emotion and makes um, a story out of it um, it kind of spirals out into all yeah. sorts of complex so just mm. mind will try to think about the emotion as a way to avoid feeling it if i can think about it i don't have to really be with it that's the the way that mind uh, handles it. So if you can, as best you can, and there's no perfect thing in this, let me just feel this emotion and see what it wants to tell me. So shame, when I felt shame and I really asked it what it wanted to say to me, it said, um, I don't deserve to exist, something like that. Or I don't deserve to be happy. I don't deserve to wake up to the truth. and Fear was saying, you know, I'm, I'm not safe, I'm in danger. These very almost simplistic beliefs behind these emotions, but nonetheless, they felt very true still when that emotion came up. So I had to really question those. And this is how awakening goes deeper, how you fully live as a self by looking at these old ideas, seeing what you are, and also seeing what you're not even clearer. So each one of us perhaps might have had this kind of um uh I, I certainly had this victim story going on life isn't fair um you know and um, why does this always happen to me you know those kind of stories and I had to really look at them but look at them as the stillness itself as the peace not from the mind and see if it's true now can you get a sense of it you mean right now if you want to. Um, or just as it comes I... up generally, you know, when it comes up. Just questioning, uh, the, questioning the belief behind the star, the emotion when it comes up. I can try, sure. And, and all we need to do is, is do our best to feel the emotion and I can, I can, can I actually just feel it? Can I let this emotion exist inside my body for a while? And then gently ask it what it wants to tell me. 
Okay. And it'll keep coming up and keep coming up because it just wants our acceptance. It wants our love. And this is how the stillness would treat it. It would accept it and love it. Not necessarily like it. We don't have to like feeling shame. Nobody's ever going to, or fear, or anger, or whatever. This is part of awakening. It's always two things going on at once. I'm seeing who I really am clearer in my meditation, in my self-inquiry, whatever, by spontaneous glimpse. And then I'm always seeing uh, who I who I thought I was. That's not true. I'm seeing that clearer. This is what I thought I was. And that those are going on. I'll have a deeper seeing of who I am. Then I'll have some old pattern belief arise and I'll say, whoa, that's not true. It keeps going like that. So. Okay. And um, last question, and huh? then I'm, I'm going. Um, is am I supposed to keep keep the mind out of it as, as best as possible? Because um, yeah, the, the mind always wants to kind of own it and <laughs> yeah, and tell me what this is about and its implications and so forth and um yeah so what exactly to do about the mind in this process you're just noticing like you said that mind always wants to take you have some insight or epiphany or how a moment and mind wants to write a book about it right it wants yeah. to <laughs> yeah so you just you just notice that that mind something within us wants to take what we've seen and make it into a process or make it into mine it's mine I, i've seen this you know this kind of urge to take it as a separate being so just noticing that and it's all that that's what mind does it's okay you're just seeing it and you're not getting involved with it if you can stay looking at it yeah I mean, the mind wants the approval, and um, it yeah. figures the more interesting the story sounds, uh, <laughs> that uh, the approval will be. Um, yeah. I had this um, victim story that was so embroidered by the end. I was like, my awakening had been the hardest. I'd been through so much. And so, because then mine said, see i must be lovable um, look at look at what i've achieved you know like and it's quite funny now looking back but it was really painful at the time you know like yeah. i'm i'm the super seeker because i've overcome mountains and you know uh all of that stuff if you just notice that whatever self realizes about itself mind then goes oh, what can we do with this now then what, what are we going to yeah. do with this yeah you just notice it just notice it that's what mine does right it's a storyteller yeah so just noticing is enough okay. yeah and if you get caught up in a little while it's okay just come back to clarity as soon as you can there goes yeah. mine doing its thing yeah Yeah, th thank you so much for chatting with me and uh, for these satsangs. I think I I made quite some progress since I talked to you last time. And, yeah. Wonderful. We're just uh, peeling away these stories that have been covering who we really are. That's all we're doing, isn't it? Just seeing clear and letting go of yeah. these stories. Yeah. Wonderful. It's lovely to meet you and talk to you. And seeing that the, the stories aren't really an obstacle anyway. It's just, yeah. Yeah, they're just stories. It, it's like mine's a storyteller. That's what it does. So, yeah. yeah. Only if I fight with that do I get into trouble. Does it get a bit sticky? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Bye. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Amanda. Hi, Alan. Hi. Can you hear me? Oh, good. <laughs> yep, yep, all uh, good. This is my first time making it to Satsang because um, oh, I live in, I've been watching your videos for about a year and a half and I um, just started the Dissolving the Ego course and I really oh, like it. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, one thing um, just to share with you, I feel like I've really fallen in love with, like you say, or gotten addicted to 
feeling the stillness. It's I can really check back so much easier now. And it's it's always there. It's and just finding that right way in, isn't it? We, we might have been trying to listen to silence and that's not our thing. It's like stillness. Right. Oh, wherever awareness the, get, you know, which, it, which it, yeah. suits you. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like a like a very peaceful, encompassing, just still kind of blanket that covers anything that's happening. So and it's very addicting and it just no matter what's happening, it just immediately becomes peaceful and still. It just and cushions, I, and I really, cushions you from from the from the noise and the stuff, doesn't it? A little bit. It's just right. Yeah. And and the one thing I've noticed is um, and it's kind of funny, but I can't really tell stories about myself like I used to it just doesn't feel right like just for instance for yesterday I was I had spent three or four days writing a paper and then at the very end I realized I had done it wrong oh, and um it felt like I a part of me an old part of me wanted to come up and be judgmental and and make a story about it and get upset but the stillness was there and it was so um addicting and mm -hmm. it was so it, it was like it was kind of made the story so irrelevant yeah. and then when I went to tell it back to my partner and tell him what happened with the paper I couldn't really even tell the story yeah. it was just like oh uh it doesn't even matter it just it just and that's been happening more and more where I'll I'll want to go back and like talk about something or have a you know a conversation about something in the past or something I should be upset about or something somebody but the stillness is there and it just takes me in and it's like oh never mind it's never like mind I really just can't be bothered to actually get upset, right? I just, it's Absolutely. just, stillness is just so effortless and it, it takes just, a lot of energy to get, to tell a story. And we don't realize that because we've been doing it so long. Once you get a taste it feels, of what it's like. I automatically just feel like it's, it wants, I, I get contracted and it's like, nope, nope. The stillness, it just, I can't, it's like everything is like a shadow yeah. compared to this still feeling. And that's um, where we, we, we find out who we are first, because then letting go of the stories is just so much easier. Why would you even want to hold on to that when you see what it's cost you? There's some willingness there that wasn't there before, right? Once right. you see and, what, what, what the prize is, so to speak, for, for not, not going there, it's, it's easier. There definitely still, there definitely still feels like there's a person there. Like I, I feel like there's somebody that is just enjoying the stillness and loves it so much. So there's, it, I don't feel, I don't identify with, oh, that stillness is me yet. I, I don't feel like I am, but I could be bothered. I don't really care. <laughs> it's so silly, but I feel like, oh, well, I love the stillness so much. And I don't even, there's no feeling like I need to get some more of it. I need to do something else. Oh dear, this isn't quite enlightenment yet. No, I don't even, it's like, what, what, uh, that's okay. <laughs> like a story will come up and say, that's not enlightenment. If you are really enlightened, da, 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 and then it just yeah, goes, yeah. Mind has it's just like melts yeah. away and I don't even really care. Um, there is one thing that keeps happening and it hasn't happened for a little while, but it's happened a bunch. And I know people talk about it a lot, but I'll just talk about it too. And I'll get, I will get a glimpse of like, a, I guess you could call it a total ego death where it's just like a really big, like, boom, you're nothing, you're nobody, you're not a body. And instantly, it only lasts like a second because instantly I'm overcome with so much fear. Yeah. Like it's just a palpable, crazy amount of fear. And even, it's not even my will, just something just shuts the door on the whole experience. Yeah. Nope, yeah. not gonna go there, shut, slam. Yeah. And then a moment later, I'll come back to my senses or whatever. And I'll say to my, wow, that was it. I was almost there. I was seeing it. Why did I shut the door on it again? And I keep almost seeing it. And then I can't, it's just bam, slam, too freaky, too scary. Can't go there. And it's like, I've done that so many times, Helen, where I've seen it. I've seen it, but really for like a millisecond or one second or two seconds, but it's so scary that it doesn't even feel like it's my will. There's just something that just shuts the door. This is egoic sense. Let me the, the person, the, the separate sense of self is terrified. So for me, I got to this point and there was this shutting down and then it was torture because I wanted, I wanted to be this so badly. You get to that kind of precipice, so to speak, and then you see it and then this thing just comes and fear and shuts it down. And in the end, I had to, um, to really look at what that fear is. Why, why the shutdown? What's, what's the ego scared of? What does it think is going to happen? 
if you were to move towards this rather than shutting it down, what does ego say is is so terrible? What what is it scared of? If I think I'm scared it... of the fear. I'm afraid of the fear itself. It's it's. I feel like the fear is such a yucky, strong feeling. I just don't want to feel the fear. Let, let's so that's, uh, let's that's that's something. But let's go to the thing that shuts it down. Right. Well, you just get in touch if you can, best you can right now with that that says no, no. That that sort of response. What is it? What is it worried about? What is it? Why is it saying no? What's the what's the terrible thing that's going to happen if if you say yes? You might consciously know this isn't true, but we're just unraveling the egoic fragments inside so that we can. So just getting in touch with that now. Why, why is it saying non-judgmentally completely just really wanting mm -hmm. to understand I, I, no. it, it, it feels like a big loss like I'm giving up something like okay. almost like grief like I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be losing gonna cost myself too much. yeah I'm gonna lose myself like so. gone you know and I won't get it back it's like it's like a no it's like it's like kind of like jumping off a cliff once I say yes to this too big a price to pay right I can't turn back there's no yeah. turning back kind of a feeling so this is really, really common and it's really important to realize that this seems true to ego because it thinks that that is who you are. It thinks it's ego or stillness. And it thinks that if it moves into the stillness, this part of me is going to be gone, annihilated. But that's because it thinks you're actually changing. Right? Some part of you knows... Actually, all that's happening is I'm recognizing I've always been the stillness, looking at my egoic sense of self running around in front of me, inside me, the stillness. And that I can't actually lose that because I've always, I'm only seeing where I'm always, nothing's actually changing over. I'm just seeing clear where I'm looking from. I'm looking from the stillness. I thought I was looking from this ego at the stillness and that I'd have to shift over jump off this cliff but what if there's no cliff precipice to jump off mm. then this fear uh you begin to understand that this fear is uh, irrational because you can't actually lose anything in this seeing and I'm really talking from my own experience here I've got to this point and pulled back so many times because this idea it was going to cost me too much. Mm -hmm. Because because of this great idea that I'm going to have to actually become the stillness, become the infinite self. But when you see clearer, actually, that's not actually true. I am the self already, always have been. I'm just seeing that clearer. Nothing can change. I'm just looking in the mirror in the bathroom and going, oh, that's me. Mm. and the dissolving of the ego is only the attachment the belief that this egoic thing is who we are and it just becomes this thing that softens and unravels and it becomes a useful thing then to navigate our worldly life do you think it's going to take a lot of effort to push through it no. because like i said right no. now i feel so like effortless it feels so just no. like even just talking to you about that story, it just feels like, oh, that story's there. It's great. But I don't have a huge, like before it's I not, did, before I about, had a huge uh, desire to do effort, but now I don't. Yeah, and that's the stillness. And the stillness now just wants to release this story too. That something, that there's some, uh, and I had it myself, and there's this big myth and legend in in the spiritual seeking community that there is this big bang firework moment right at the end where you have to make the ultimate surrender and sacrifice of everything you used to be and let that die and it's just not true it's like here's who I thought I was and I'm seeing this is who I am and inclusive in this stillness is this little me and I get to be both you said it yourself still feel like a person enjoying the stillness for me there still seems to be a someone here talking but i've seen clearly it's not a natural thing mm. and it I, never I, feel like seen, I feel like i've seen that clearly too so maybe i'm just maybe i just have this story still that there has to be some final like you said 
so just so just really on. just just gently questioning is there anything here to even shift over from the ego's perspective it looks like there is but actually you can resolve this you can say well is there anything to actually be scared of if, if is what the fear is about actually possible to happen and we find out it's not mm. and the biggest surprise of all to me was nothing actually happened there was just this big piece that came yeah still do all the things I used to do like to do I still like me tea rather than coffee I still listen to certain music well, like stuff on you know nothing died in that way the only thing that died was my ability to think that this is all I am mm. so just gently seeing that okay yeah I feel like that's a that's a that I thank you that's helpful because it just feels like it's just another story and it's a story that I'm still it is but it has a lot of fear attached, behind attached it me, to God, in a way it? yeah so it's just gently it is um every fear I came up against like this when I actually looked at it it, it wasn't possible what what mind was scared of wasn't couldn't actually happen but I needed to investigate a little to see that I'm just right. seeing yeah and my mind is like oh we'll see the fears there so it means there's more stuff you have to do and it's going to be really hard and so that just feels like almost silly to say it like that, but it feels like, false, oh yeah, false that's evidence story. appearing real, the acronym that helped me, false evidence appearing real. It seems very real, yeah. what the mind mm -hmm. is terrified of, but for mm. the self, the stillness, it, it's, it's just a non-event. It can't actually happen. Mm, I love that. I love that. Thank you, Helen. Thank false you. evidence appearing real. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your Thank teachings. You. Thank you. Thank They've you. really helped me so much. Thanks. Wonderful. Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you too. We'll go to Frank and then we'll do a 10 minute uh, meditation to finish when you're ready, Frank. Helen, hey. Hi. Uh, hey, good to see you. Um, question about the mind. I, I've been meaning to ask this for a while. I wasn't sure how I was going to ask it, but when we. Can you. Mind in this non dual sense. Could you just start feels... that again, Frank? Sorry, I lost you for a moment there. Can you hear me? Can you hear us, Frank? Oh. Yeah, I can. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, I'm going to okay. keep my headsets in, keep my earbuds in. Okay. I wanted to ask you a question about mind. Uh -huh. uh, it seems to me like when we talk about mind, it almost sounds to me like we're talking about an entity. And I'm, I'm always asking myself, like, what, when we say, oh, mind thinks this and mind doesn't want this and mind wants that, who are we actually talking about? A bunch of thoughts. Just thoughts. Or an energy. And they can sort of, they can say, well, I want this and I want that and I don't like this and I like that. Or how do they, and they talk to us as, uh, as Numenon? Yeah. <clears throat> it, mind or ego, whatever you want to call it, uh, actually believes itself to be a someone, an entity. Hmm. But That's what it I, sounds like yeah and, and it really believes it has a life of its own and that's why the fear we were just talking about with amanda because it feels mm -hmm. oh my god i'm gonna have to die in this process i'm a real person and i'm gonna yeah. have to die or dissolve or something but the dissolution mm. is just the recognition that it's just an energy it's just a a set yeah. of thoughts that has somehow got this momentum of its own uh, and because we're so powerful if we believe it's a person, an entity, then then it really seems like that. Really, really seems like that. Mm -hmm. So when we say, like, when I say, like, I, let's say, it's the mind speaking, but I'm I'm using the word I or I am, and it's really the mind that talking. It seems like, isn't that noumenon sort of like confusing itself for a mind? Yeah, in a way, it's okay. always the noumenon. It's always the noumenon. Yeah. Um, that's what I was just, trying to get at yeah this, sometimes yeah. it's clear about who it is and then sometimes uh -huh. it gets a little confused sometimes it talks through thoughts and gets uh -huh. it gets distorted and then sometimes it talks without any filter and it's clear or sometimes so it when we say thoughts rather I should say okay sorry to cut you off yeah so when we say mind doesn't like this it's really kind of it's really noumenon because everything is noumenon I know that I, I, mean, I understand that part of it so it's really Numenon speaking as if it was mind, like forgetting that it's Numenon in a way, kind yeah. of a funny forgetfulness, right? Yeah. Okay, great. That's, totally, that really helps a lot. 
it's totally clear noumenon awareness self consciousness absolutely free yeah. but then mm. it takes the shape as a human being and imagines itself to be bound and that it has to find a way back out and all that's going on in thoughts only meanwhile yeah. before thoughts it's still completely free and could never be otherwise yeah. okay. so mind says Great. how do i get out of this and there's no real answer to that is it because the noumenon isn't actually stuck right <laughs> can i ask <laughs> another quick question that uh, yeah. it's, it's going to be a little person so uh, i just wanted to put the, i really just want to put this out into the universe because i i'm, I'm not i don't think i'm going to get any answers uh, any specific answers and it's okay i mean i'd love to get one but if i don't that's fine i just want to put this out because it's something that's really kind of making me it's really causing me to suffer and that is that I'm helping take care of my elderly mom who has dementia. And I'm saying this here because I know you guys really, everybody here knows that we're all one. So I don't like saying this around other people that don't understand that dementia is not really real. Anyway, uh, so, so but but she's under that belief that she has dementia. She's, she's playing it out. And, uh, you know, she's suffering because of it. And I help take care of her four days a week. And it's a really, it's a big drain on me because, uh, well, for a lot of different reasons, because I've got other things I've got to do. I, you know, I, I work and everything. So. Uh, so during the week while I'm taking care of her, I'm finding that I'm loving the fact that I'm helping my mom. I love this woman more than anything. Uh, and I don't want her to die. I want her to be, I want to be with her in her last days. I don't know how long she'll be around. Uh, but the other part of it is I, I sort of like, I start out like, let's say on a Monday and I'm already looking forward to the end of the week. Like, by, cause today's Thursday, so it'll be my last day. I'm yeah. already looking for that. And cause I just want to get out and have like my weekend and almost like I'm back in high school and I can't wait for the weekend so I can go out and party. I don't drink. I don't stuff like that, but you know, just that feeling if I want to be free. So that makes me feel really guilty that I'm doing that. I want to be able to enjoy my mom and really appreciate the time I have with her without this feeling of like, when is Friday going to be here? When is Thursday going to be here so I can get out of here? So I just wanted to put this out there. It's really it's really making me suffer. Yeah. There's a lot of guilt and pain around it. So I just wanted to put that out there. Uh, if you have anything no, to say, that'd be, that, that'd be great. It's um, it, it's very, very difficult caring for someone with dementia, isn't it? Physically yes. and emotionally. And it's okay to admit that, isn't it, in yourself? That, that I want to do this, yeah. but it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. And of course mm -hmm. you want, of course you want what you want. I'd like some time alone or just to meditate or whatever I want to do. Right. So yeah, just accepting how you feel and also accepting what you want. You'll find peace there. That's the suffering, mm. not the actual thing you're going through looking after her. I mean, yes, that might be physically intense, but the emotional suffering, the spiritual suffering is because you're squashing down how you feel. The guilt you said, right? I shouldn't feel mm -hmm. this way. I should be only, I should only be grateful for the time I've got with her. Yeah. Which is also how you feel, but some part of you doesn't, um, doesn't want it and doesn't enjoy it. And that's okay too, isn't it? Yeah, it's there. I mean, it's 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 what it is. It's there. Can you feel? Can you feel a peace when you just admit that inside? It's okay. Yeah, I, I I feel. Yeah, I'm feeling more acceptance. Uh, yeah, but it's there's a sadness that goes along with all of this. It's just so many conflicting feelings, and just uh, there's a big a lot of sadness around it all. Yeah. So. Yeah. If you can, if you can do one thing, it is to feel what you feel completely as much as you yeah. can just just feel it yeah and also the body. yeah as much as you and there's no absolute without a perfect way it's just I just really would like to let these things uh these emotions be felt I don't want to squash them down anymore because that's what really hurts mm. and then and also the other side of that is I want what I want and it's okay right just that that's like this mm -hmm. uh authenticity this self-respect i i want these things and it's okay what about the guilt the guilt is a really heavy one with me i i that's so painful you were what talking about shame say? shame shame is painful and so is so is guilt guilt is really painful what it just says you, oh what's the story behind guilt what's it saying it says oh yeah it's telling me i really shouldn't feel that way how, how you know how can you feel that way about you know your mom you want to get away from your mom and she's dying and stuff you know like ah that's so, it it's that guilt but you don't really want to get away from your mom. What you actually want is peace or something, right? Free time, yeah. peace. That's not mm -hmm. the same as wanting to get yeah. away. So just getting 
getting clear That's on true, what yeah. it is you actually want rather than what you don't want mm -hmm. and then yeah, you'll peace. see yeah so um the guilt is you, you shouldn't feel that way or something like that you shouldn't you shouldn't want that but um if you took any human being in the experience that you're having right now they would feel the same way that you do mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I can suppose, you just yeah. can you just be with that it's okay to want what i want i try yeah yeah just and, and no no superman heroics i'm just going to try and accept a little bit more each day that i have these strong desires and it's okay mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i've been working on that but that, that helps to hear from you it helps to hear from you and a little bit of a confirmation there okay great thanks, thanks appreciate you. it so much good to talk to you thank you good to talk to you too okay so let's just take 10 minutes before we finish um i really just want to um spend a few minutes um let's just take some time to just dive into what's real about us what's permanent what's stable so let's just begin by <clears throat> really making sure that we're actually here let's be here now here in this satsang even though we're almost at the end let's just really be here let's be present what does that mean it means let's not be thinking so much about what happens after we finish or what we haven't done before let's just really be here in this moment together and if you want to close your eyes you can if you don't that's okay too and if thoughts pop up just let them come and go. If you follow them, it's okay. Just come back to this moment when you recognize that you've gone. Like, are you really here now? Being here and now in this moment, there's a depth of stillness and peace. not doing anything we're just present here in this moment letting go of any <clears throat> intentions right now just for this time there's nothing to do here there's nothing we need to achieve I'm just here. Just noticing how it feels to just be here, to not be traveling for a moment. Coming to a stop, whatever that means for you right now, just coming to a stop, a pause at least. Just resting here, nowhere to go, nothing to do.
Whatever moves, let it move. If mind talks, let it talk. And you just stay here. Just being here, being present. Just being here, nothing else. It's really nothing you need to do. Just be. taking a pause
enjoying being here. So, in a moment, bring this meditation and this satsang to a close. But we don't have to. As we do that, we don't have to hit play again. We can stay paused. We can watch our body begin to move around, our eyes open, our mouth begin to speak. And inside, we're just here. You can, in fact, just live here. Thank you. Namaste.